morning. I told her I didn't need this microphone. <laughs> Start off this morning with a song, Blessed Assurance. Everyone want to stand? Sing with us. Amen. How many of you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. It is so good to see you all today. And uh, thank you, Miss Dolores. Amen. And Jared, it's so good. To have. Let's give them a hand this morning. Amen. Uh, we appreciate them today. And uh, we hope that Nathan enjoys his time away. Amen. How I many you know that it does a body good to get a few moments of breath? Amen. And uh, we just pray that they enjoy their self with a little mountain air this morning. Amen. But uh, we miss them. But it's good to see you all here in the house of the Lord today. 
And uh, we just thank you for being here this morning, looking forward to what God has in store for us here today. Amen. So excited, amen, to enter into these gates and into these courts today. And we've come today with thanksgiving and praise because the Bible declares that he inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. And we're glad that you're here to do just that with us this morning. Amen. Good to have you all in the house of the Lord, and we want to welcome his presence here today. Amen. Maybe you've come this morning, and you are bearing a need this morning. If so, just lift up that hand. Amen. Hold it there just a moment. You know the routine, because I want you to think about why you're asking this morning. My daddy used to have this uh, remarkable way of keeping me from coming to him and asking for a lot. Because when I'd come and ask him as a little boy for a little piece of money, he would always say, now hold on, son, let's think about this. Why do you need this? What is the purpose behind this? So I think once in a while, you know, it's just easy just to throw up our hands and say, Lord, I, I, I have need. But I believe today God is wanting us just to pause a moment and think about what we're asking for. Then I think we ought to go ahead and say goodbye to it. Because when we bring it to Him, we can leave it there. If you really believe that this morning, I want you to join me in prayer. Let's ask God today expecting to receive. Heavenly Father, we've come into this house today. We have entered into your courts with thanksgiving and praise. Your word declares that we are to let our petition be known unto you. Now, Father, we have come to you this morning with great anticipation and expectation. For it is you, Lord, that is able today. The word declares unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above and beyond that that I can even think or imagine. I'm serving a limitless God today. There is nothing too hard for you. And we've come today to celebrate the great I Am, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Everything that I need today sums up in one name, and His name is Jesus. Now, Father, we've come to worship you today in spirit and in truth. You know our need. You know our petition. And even in the midst of this series that we're in now, entitled Trouble, God, we are not cast down today because we are encouraged, because we are reminded this is not the end. It is not over today because the great I Am still sits on the throne and He is able this morning to meet us at our place of need. And not only is He able to meet us needs in individual lives and I can meet them at that place of need, but I soon realize and am reminded that there is very little that I can do to meet that need. But we're speaking to one now who is able to meet every need. Regardless of whether it's in the confines of this building, of those that are joining us out in the parking lot via their radio, or those that will be watching online today through our live service as this being broadcasted, God, you are master of every need and every situation. Whether it's confined in this building today or it's somewhere outside, you are able. But as well today, as the world looks for an answer, as the world looks for a cure, I am reminded today that you are waiting on the church. For you declared, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray. Then, and only then, not when a cure comes, not when someone is elected, not when someone steps on the scene with an antidote or a cure, but when my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their lands. God, I believe the healing is coming because I believe the church is praying. I know we as an individual church, 24-7, around the clock, we're knocking on heaven's door and we're apologizing and pleading with you to forgive us of our sins, to forgive us of the times when we have failed you, to forgive us 
when we said to you we no longer want you in our business and in our affairs when we as a nation have said that we no longer want you in our courtrooms we no longer want you in our schools we no longer want you in our homes and even in many churches today God there may be a feeling that we don't need God any longer but I declare today that I need Jesus I need you in my home. I need you in my church. I need you in my personal relationship. We need you back in America again. And we repent today. We ask you, Father, to hear our cry, to deliver us as you see our need today. And I believe, Father, you'll do exactly what you said and promised you would do, that if I draw nigh unto you, you will draw nigh unto me. Do it now in this hour, O Lord, we pray. It is in Jesus' name we ask these things this day. And the church said, Amen and Amen. Turn to that neighbor. Throw up that hand. Let them know you're glad to see them this morning. And you may be seated in the presence of the Lord today. Amen. A couple of reminders before Gene comes back this morning. I want to remind those of you that have a birthday card for Sister Vernell. Please make sure that... Uh, I mean, you know, love's more important than anything else we got going on. Amen. I I want you to understand today that love is more important than anything else what we got going on. And I'm glad today that we're able to embrace one another. Though we may not be uh, comfortable doing so physically, we can do it spiritually. And it feels good to be in a place this morning where people are reaching out to one another and loving on one another, amen. Even though it may be from a distance, amen, we're loving on one another. I want to tell you today, world, I hope you're listening today, Internet. I hope you're listening today in those automobiles. And I hope we're listening here in this building this morning. We need Jesus. I just want to tell you we need Jesus. For He is love. Amen. I want to remind you this morning that you have a card for Sister Vernell. She's going to be celebrating 91st birthday this coming Wednesday. And many of you have gotten cards. Make sure Tammy has that card before you leave today. Uh, because after this morning's service, they're going to be sent to the nursing home. They have to lay for several hours, I think about 48 hours, and then they're going to be carried to her and be able to be shared with her. Amen. It's just a token of our love. Amen. And uh, we appreciate all of you. And I just want you to know today, uh, whether you feel like you're at home or not this morning, I want you to know you're at home. Because when you walked in that door, you came into the Father's house. And when you're at the Father's house, you're at home. And I just want you to be aware of that today. And some of our church family have heard me say this before, but I just feel the urgency to say this right now. Uh, 1980, Tammy and I got married. I I know y'all are thinking there's no way Tammy's that old. um, You know I'm that old. uh, Tammy and I had been married just a few weeks. And when we got married, we moved across the driveway. I told told to tell everybody I'm a... I'm an adventurous person. I got married and moved across the driveway. So, I remember going over to my mom and daddy's house one day and I stepped up on the back porch and out of courtesy I reached over and I knocked on the door and I went on and opened the door and I stepped in and I said, it's me. I come on in and my daddy was a man of few words and he looked at me and said, uh, I'm very upset with you right now. And I thought to myself, what's new? <laughs> And he said, I want to tell you something. He said, you're at home. And you don't have to knock when you come home. And I've said this many times over the last 10 years here at Shiloh. Home is a place that you never, ever have to be invited to. But you're always welcome. And I want to tell you today, whether today is your first day or whether you've been here your entire life, when you stepped into the Father's house today, you're at home. And we're really glad you're here this morning. Now we want to worship the Lord today in spirit and in truth. We want to invite these ladies today as they're going to usher us into the presence of God. Yes, it's a little different this morning, but that's okay. Amen. I like different once in a while. Amen. And I enjoy today the fact that we're able to come together and sit down in this building and say, God, you are Lord of my life.
And I'm just really glad to be in your presence this morning. If there's anything I can do for you today that is bringing you into the presence of God, then today is going to be a great day. Let's worship the Lord this morning. God bless you. If you would, stand again. And we're going to sing contextually. We're going to start off with the chorus. It's going to be textual. Let's, you may be seated. Let's welcome Ashley and our young folks to the front this morning. Amen. For their time of worship. Let's give our children a hand this morning. Amen. We love them and appreciate them. So today is a very special day, in case you don't know, it's Grandparents' Day. And so our, um, we're, our little lesson is going to be on grandparents, and then in their backs today, they've already done some crafts in the back that they can pick up after church, but they have a couple things to do, and normally we would have grits for grands, but because of our situation, we can't do that. So each bag has two bags of grits. So they can take home and share with their grandparents today. So we're going to still get to that first. Our service today, our lesson is going to be coming from um, 2 Timothy 
It's going to come from chapter 1 and chapter 3, and it's called Timothy Grandmother. It's more like a little rhyme that we're going to be learning today. Our verse is, I always thank my God as I remember you in my prayers. And how often do you pray for your grandparents? So when we're praying, we need to make sure that we're remembering our grandparents in prayer, so just as they pray for us. Okay? So Paul had a friend named Timothy. Two letters in the Bible are for him, you see. Paul called him his son, and he said, I pray for you always, every single day. From where did Timothy's faith come? He was taught to love God by his mom and grandma. His grandmother taught his mother, and then his godly mother taught God's truth to him. From the time he was just a baby boy, he was learning God's word and with hope and joy. His grandmother's faith came first with truth when she told her daughter and what to do. Then Timothy's mom showed him the way. It is, with fa- it, it is a faith chain reaction, you might say. So Timothy, his, his faith came from his grandma teaching his mom, and then his mom taught him. So that's the same as a lot of you sitting up here. So today when you're sitting doing service, make sure that you are creating and completing with that card that Brenda sent you, Carla, and then you can pick up the card for the back of the card. Okay? So remember to pray about your grandparents. And it doesn't always have to be a grandma or grandpa. We have special people in our lives that are like grandparents or have the gift of grandparents. Okay? All right, let's go to our scripture. And then there's the Bible. Amen. Thank you all so much that are working with our children and our young folks. They matter. That'd been a real good place for everybody in this building to say amen. 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 They matter. Amen. And you mean that preacher with every fiber of being. Amen. Uh, right now, it's already been ordered. Most of you, we announced it last Sunday morning, but we've uh, got a, a commercial grade play system, uh, three stories high, that is going to be erected over there, uh, the other side of our youth facility. And uh, the old fellowship hall is going to be turned into a youth uh, facility. And we're excited about that for our young people. There's going to be a chain link fence that is put up next to that property over there. and. Uh, when our kids are checked in that front building, then you'll know that they're going to be safe till you go back and pick them up there. And somebody ought to give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Um, it's been a few weeks since uh, we had celebrated our children. Before I forget this also, I want to remind you today that uh, uh, there's going to be a wedding shower here this afternoon at uh, 2 o'clock uh, for Stevie. I'm just going to say it like that because it's for Stevie, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, I tell these guys all the time when we're going through marriage counseling, I just look at the, the husband and say, look, you just show up. You be there at the right time and you're going to be okay. And then I start talking to the bride and the groom. Uh, but at any rate, there's going to be a wedding shower this afternoon here at 2 o'clock given by the family. And uh, you as the Shiloh family have been invited. And I know Stevie would be glad to see you all today. But it's been a few uh, weeks ago since we honored our, our graduates and uh, there's a young man that has uh, popped in the building this morning, and we're really glad to see A.J. today, and uh, we're excited that he is here with us this morning. And uh, a few weeks ago when uh, Charlie B., time flies, it seems like a few weeks ago when Charlie B. and his crew was um, working on this stage, preparing it and building it for us, there was a young man toting materials in the door, and uh, he 
Brother Charlie B. looked at me and said, you don't know who that is, do you? And I'm like, I looked up at him and I said, oh my goodness, he's supposed to be this high. And uh, then all of a sudden, here they appear before us and they're grown young folks. And uh, But he has graduated high school this year, uh, the class of uh, 2020. And uh, we're proud of uh, Arnold Brewington, Jr. We all know him as... Uh, AJ, and uh, we just want to invite him if he will. I don't want to embarrass him this morning, but if he will come forward this morning, we have a gift today that we would like to give you on behalf of uh, Shiloh Church today. And um, it's so amazing how these children just come in, and uh, in ten and a half years of pastoring, you watch them grow up before your very eyes, and then all of a sudden you're standing in their presence one day, and you're looking up at them like this right here. Um, but we have a gift we'd like to give you today on behalf of Shiloh Pentecostal Holiness Church. And I just want to tell you, inside of this gift today, you're going to find the treasure of the Lord. The nuggets of your future are held here in the palm of my hand. But it is only available to you if you open it and receive it for yourself. And I want to say to you and echo to you, as I've said already earlier here in this service today, home is a place that you never have to be invited to, but you're always welcome. Shiloh will be home to you. And we just want to say to you today, you're always welcome home. God bless you. Let's clap and give it back. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. And to God be the glory. Amen. It is so good to have you all with us here this morning. And we're glad that you made your way down Altry Mill Road today. But we're really glad that God is here. Amen. We're glad that He is in, in our presence. And it's good to see you all. Uh, this has been a unique season that we have come through. Uh, and I say come through because I believe we're coming through it. Amen. I, I believe this is not the end. I believe we're coming through it. And I believe according to what declares the word of God, our future is going to be better than our former. I, I just really believe that as children of God, we ought to take this word and as it's laid out before us, I believe we ought to grab hold of it and say yes, Lord, and amen. And when God decreed that our, for, our future is going to be better than our past, I believe we ought to just go ahead and say amen to that. And say, God, you're the one that authored that. Because you decreed over my life that you were the author and the finisher. Now, there's some things about that that I don't fully understand. I don't really understand how life goes. I don't really understand uh, the highs and the lows and the caves of life, so to speak. But what I do believe is my feet are founded on the rock today. And in that I have great confidence that my God is able today to sustain me in every season of my life. Does anybody agree with that today? Amen. And we've, we've had a unique opportunity over the last six months to pour into people's lives that didn't normally sit under our table. Uh, we've had some extended, I call it extended family, uh, family members from other churches that because of circumstances at their local church, they've not been able to meet and many of them have come right along with us even when we were out in the parking lot. Uh, just untold numbers from our community came and joined us here on this property and we worship God together in spirit and truth. I know when we were in the parking lot, we had at least three, and I know of at least three counties that were coming here. Uh, did you hear that? Counties that were coming here, people represented. And so I just say to you today that God you takes every season of our life and He uniquely positions us at a place for blessing. Now it's up to you and I to receive that blessing. And we have grown during this season. Church doesn't look anything like it used to look. Amen? You know, the things that we had been comfortable with for so many years, all of a sudden we were no longer able to do those things. From even coming in this building and then because of legislator and us being able to come back in the building, we've been blessed and many that are not normally sitting at our table have come along beside of us and in this building. And when their churches open back up, our heart kind of takes a skip and we know that they're not going to be with us any longer and then all of a sudden we feel refreshed and we say thank you God for allowing us to pour into them for a season allowing them to come along beside of us and increase us during this season, and we celebrate that together today. 
I said all of that today to say to you what I'm about to say is God is God of every season. God knows what my tomorrow is. And He's already there. And He's already prepared for me to get there. One of the reoccurring patterns of life in Psalms is getting into pits, caught in storms, lost in deserts, or alone in caves. And last Sunday morning, we kicked off this series entitled Trouble. And I told you we were going to be going to Psalms chapter 18, and there we were going to be walking through the life experience of a guy named David. Now, most of us, when we think about a guy named David, the first thing that comes to our mind is the heroics of an individual that reached down and picked up stones, took a sling, and killed a giant. But how many of you know that every day is not that day? Every day in our lives, we're not giant slayers. Some days, we're in the pasture tending the flock. And there are those that are coming to kill, steal, and destroy. And somehow we have to muster up enough faith to prove God o'er and o'er again. I just wish I could sing. I'd break out singing. But I just want to tell you I'm going to spare you this morning because some of my family members is like, please don't do that. I got so excited, uh, you know, when our family grows, you know, things bless and We've got a guy that shows up now at most of our birthday parties and I'm so excited and everybody that's having a birthday is because he can sing. (laughs) He's not born in our family, but he's become part of our family and we're all excited now because happy birthday birthday doesn't send you over the edge any longer. Um, So I'm going to spare you that this morning, but I just want to say to you that every day is not a giant slaying day. Some days we find ourselves backed up in a cave, we ran as far as we can run, and we're in trouble. Now many of you will see the pieces in the declaration of this room today as our ministry team, and I I take no credit for that because they are amazing. I just send them the message series, they take it and run with it. Uh, But when I walked in this building the first Sunday, or the week before our first, we kicked this off, and I saw these pieces And to some of you, it might not make any sense. But how many of you have ever heard tell of the game called Trouble? And if you do, it's going to open your eyes today and you're going to remember the little plastic ball that you punch and the dice pops up and it falls. And you're going to identify with the red pieces and the blue pieces and the green pieces and the yellow pieces. And you're going to remember that these are your men and they move out of home base, but you've got to accomplish something before you can leave home. I want to tell you today that this is home. We've been talking about home a lot. But we're popping the bubble and we're having expectation to go outside and start our journey to make it home. Because once we get all the pieces home, we win. And God declares that there is a prize that is set before us, and that prize is called heaven. Amen. And it has been promised to every single one of us that know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. I want to pause right there and draw a line in the sand, and I want to decree unto you today There is only one way to heaven, and His name is Jesus Christ. There is no other way. And I just want to always make sure that I'm very clear about that. Um, My standard on that has not changed, and it will never change, because God said He was the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, He went on to share with us that there were going to be many that would try to go a different way. But He said they're nothing more than a thief and a robber. There is no other way to home other than through and by Jesus Christ. 
He is the redeemer of our soul, but he loves us on the good days and he loves us on the bad days and he loves us on every day in between. And I just want to decree into you this morning when we're thinking about trouble and the perplexity of being backed in a cave, it doesn't sound all that heroic, but I just want you to know today that on the good day, God loves you, and on the bad day, God loves you. I just feel like I ought to say that again. On the good day, God loves you. I'm talking about all of us in this building have had some really good days. We've had some days when we were giant slayers. We've had some days when we went out and accomplished some great and mighty things. If you're listening today in your car or you're watching by internet, I want to say to you today, I don't want you to feel defeated this morning. I don't want you to be downtrodden today. I want to decree unto you today that it is not the end. And if God be for you, it doesn't matter who or what is against you. Can the church say amen? There are times in our life when we have to just pause for a moment and contemplate the fact of what we're going to do. And the Bible decrees that my challenge is to choose today whom I will serve. Now it's easy some days to choose because there are some days that I'm challenged by events that push me to a place of greatness. There are certain days in my life because of things that are going on around me that it's just easy to pray. It's easy to study God's Word. It's easy to reach out and to cleave to God. But then there are other days that it's just very difficult. I'm just going to be honest with you. And anything less than that. Now, you know, here in our perfect world, we call it our spiritual realm. None of us really want to think about the fact that there are some days that we're just in despair. There are some days when we just don't have it all together. There are some days when we're in perplexity. There are some days when we're brought to a place where it feels like we're not even going to make it. David had been ran into a cave, and he began to cry out to God for his life. What? We're talking about a guy that reaches down and picks up a stone and defiles and liberates God's kingdom from that that is sent to destroy it. And yet today we're back in a cave. How many of you know God still loves you this morning? God is still for you this morning. God is still cheering you on this morning. As I stated, it is a reoccurring pattern in the Psalms when we see people that are falling into pits, they're caught in storms, they're lost in deserts, they're alone in a cave, and David felt trapped in this helpless, hopeless situation. Even in that terrible time of darkness and fear, God heard his cry, and he reached into David's cave, and he lifted him out. And we are reminded today of what the Lord did for us when he reached way down into the depths of our sin and he lifted us out by his power and his grace. I just want to tell you, that's a good place right there for me to rejoice. That's a good place today for me to celebrate because there was a day when I was lost and I was undone and I was on my way to a devil's hell. I was living in fear, overcome by my own perplexity, lost and undone. I didn't have any hope, and I was angry with the world about it. But how many of you know when Jesus comes and he sets you free, the Bible decrees that you are free indeed. And it doesn't matter whether you're in a cave or whether you're slaying giants, you're still free because God has not changed his mind about you. And I want to encourage you today and remind you, God said, if I'm for you, it don't matter what's against you. And I come to decree unto you today that God is still for you. God still loves you. Amen. And He is wanting you this morning to resurrect the hope that is within you. He wants you today to be challenged today through trouble and understand that God loves you. David understood, and I want you to hear this today as David Thorle quotes, and I quote him this morning, the mass of men leads lives of quiet desperation. We pretend every 
we pretend we're walking in victory and soaring high, but in reality we're not. We're in a dark pit or cave. And we understand that a cave is a deep, dark hole where you feel stuck. And I just want those last three words to echo today. Or four words. Where you feel stuck. And I want to address you for just a moment if you feel stuck today. If you're in a place in your life where you're overwhelmed, Now, I just want to remind you today that trouble comes to all of us, but all of us didn't order trouble. Now, there have been some times in my life when I got exactly what I had deserved. I went looking for trouble, and I found it. But I want you to know this morning that there are some times when trouble just comes our way and didn't have anything to do with us. And I just want to decree unto you this morning and I want to help you understand that when we find ourselves in trouble, God is pulling for us. David understood that every new experience in his life was an occasion for him to write a psalm. And we know that the psalms are nothing more than songs of praise. And I said to you last Sunday morning, what is your song? What is it today that you are echoing in your mind? Is it this today, gloom, despair, and agony on me? If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Yes, this is not hee-haw. Though I may resemble Junior Samples a little bit. My number's not BR549. God is for you this morning. I just can't say that enough. God is for you this morning. And if you find yourself in a perplexed place where you feel like that it's caving in around you, I want to remind you that God is for you. A few weeks ago now, a couple of months ago, God laid it on our heart that if we were going to see America change, we had to become the antidote. And I've shared this even in my prayer this morning. I made a remark to it, and today I was speaking to several people this morning for church, and it's like God was echoing it on my heart. And I mentioned it Wednesday night in our preaching and in our teaching, and I just want to tell you today we're waiting on the world to fix this, and the world is not the answer. We're waiting on a doctor to come along with an invention that's going to solve the problems of America, and I just want to tell you today the doctor's not the answer. And many of us, like myself, we're waiting on an election day and we're waiting on some things to happen and some things to change in America, but I just want to remind you today, an election day is really not the answer. Though it may help situations some, it is not the answer. Okay, preacher, you pretty much told me what's not the answer. What is the answer? I'm glad you asked. The Word of God decrees it and it tells us, and this is what it said, if my people which are called by my name. I want to tell you today, the world is not the answer. A doctor is not the answer. A politician is not your answer. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, then when an election takes place, no. Uh, When someone steps on the stage that is the next great I am, no, because I'm afraid he's going to be the Antichrist. But what I do understand today is if my people, God is looking at the church. God is not waiting on the world. He's not waiting on a doctor. He's not waiting on a politician. God is waiting on the church. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, then, when, then, I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. I decreed unto you Wednesday night that God said, I will give you the desires of your heart. Whatever it is that we're wanting, God will let us have it. Amen. And I want to be one of those that are wanting Jesus. Amen. There has been two decrees set about this day that we're living in. The first is in the last days. How many of you know we're living in the last days? 
If you don't know it, you better wake up and smell it, amen, because we're here. That that they have prophesied about, that that they've told you about, we are here. You better hear this preacher this morning. Jesus is coming back just like he said in the moment of a twinkling of an eye. Do you believe that? I believe it with every fiber of my being today. It's time for the church to get ready, amen. It's time for us to know who we believe in and stand firmly on the word of God, amen. And God's word decrees that I win, amen. I'm a winner. I am a winner. But you're in a cave. It doesn't matter where I'm at. God is still for me, amen. David recognized where he was and he began to cry out to God and he began to decree a thing and he began to say, hey, this is not the end. I may not be slaying giants today, but I do know this is not the end because God said he is still for me and God loves me today as much as he loved me when things were soaring high and I believe today in whom I have put my faith and I am persuaded today that he is still for me. Amen. Amen. He's for me this morning. Now all of you in this building, most of you know how much I love to fish. And this is just a little minonet, really. Now there's some of you in this building. I'm not going to call any names. Y'all know who you are. This would be a net for them. But for a few of us in this building, and you know who you are, this ain't a net for the fish we catch. <laughs> I remember a few years ago we'd gone down to Santee Cooper. All I'd heard my whole life was all you got to do is get there. Man, there's catfish in there that'll eat you. All you got to do is get there and you can catch them. We fished all day long for three days and caught one fish. Wait a minute, y'all laughing. That fish weighed 68 pounds. Received a citation for that fish. We, a citation, if you don't know, is a good thing, okay? Because then you release him back into the water. In other words, that just, that's your proof you got him, okay? Now, I want you to understand something. We, when a fish is caught, me turns into we. In all actuality, Gene, I didn't catch the fish. But I was in the boat when he was caught. Now, if you're robbing a bank and I'm in the car with you, we didn't rob the bank, okay? But if we're in the boat and you catch a fish... We caught him, okay? A trap is designed that you go into it and you don't come out of it. I got to get busy building me some rabbit boxes because I went looking for my rabbit box and they're deteriorated and rotten in the woods. So I couldn't bring my rabbit box and set it up here this morning. So you're just going to have to make believe with me today. This is a trap. And you scoop it down in the water and you pick it up and in that is trapped the minnows that you're going to use to fish. Or we here at Shiloh in COVID use it as an offering plate where we stick it in your car <laughs> and receive your message. Your message to the master, Lord, I still love you and I'm giving my tithes and my offering. You know, we're standing out here like that. Just, just, you know, Pamper me a moment. David had run into a cave out of fear. But they won't but one way out of that cave. But he was trapped in that cave. And he began to cry out to the God of heaven. In the midst of this, this is what he began to uncover. And this is what he said. I may be in distress, but I will not give up. I believe God's speaking to somebody in this building this morning. You need to rise up in the cave you're in today, in that place 
of pain and hurt and say, you know what, God? I'm in a low place in my life. I'm not slaying any giants today, but I will not give up. You see, the psalmist said in chapter 18, verses 4 and 5, when he said these words, The cords of death entangle me, and the torrents of destruction, they overwhelm me. Does that sound like a giant slayer to you? The cords of the grave, in verse 5, they call around me. The snares of death, they confronted me. And you know what that sounds like to me? A man that is entangled in trouble. And he feels like that he is overwhelmed. But the Bible decrees that David encouraged himself in the presence of the Lord. You know what he stated? He stated, I may be in trouble, I may be distressed, but I refuse to give up. David feels trapped and caught up in situation that is far greater than him. And there are times when we face situations and circumstances that are beyond our control and we simply leave it in God's hands. I love what he said in Psalms 18 and 1. How I many of you know there comes a moment in your time when you got to just come to your senses? I'm reminded of a guy that had uh, took all that he had and he went over into a foreign land. He was asking for trouble. And the Bible said that he spent all that he had on righteous living, casting his seed to the wind. And he spent that that he had, and he looked around, and there was nobody left beside of him. The Bible said he hired himself out to a hog farmer. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but that's just a place where he could go to work. And the Bible said that he found himself in the hog pen eating what the hogs ate. But something happened in the hog pen. And what happened was the Bible said he came to his senses. I believe (laughs) that David back in a cave came to his senses. And this is what he said. I love you, Lord my strength then I believe he went on and he said the Lord is my rock the Lord is my fortress the Lord is my deliverer my God is my rock in whom I take refuge my shield and the horn of my salvation he is my stronghold I believe today there's somebody in this building just needs to come to your senses and recognize though you might not be slaying giants today, God still loves you and He's still cheering for you and He's still running along before you preparing tables for you to come and dine at. Amen. I just believe today God is wanting somebody in this building to say, I refuse to give up. I may feel trapped. I may be caught in a situation, but I refuse to give up. I love you, Lord. You are my strength. You are my rock. And I I just get excited when I think about what he's talking about here when he said, my God is my rock. Because that Hebrew word for God is Elohim. Elohim emphasizes God as a creator. And he means simply strength, amen. David understood that God was his creator and God was his strength, amen. But then he decreed a second thing in his own life. He said, I may be desperate, but I will not give in. Amen. There are times when you feel like giving up. And the only way you're going to get over giving up is refuse to give in. Because there are going to be times when every one of us feels like just giving in to it. I mean, we just overcome, we're backed in a cave, and it's a low place in our life. We're not slaying any giants today, and we just feel overwhelmed and overrun, but we've got to make up our mind. You know what, God? God, I believe today that I will not give up, and I believe today that I will not give in. Hear what it said in verse 6 in Psalms 18. He says, in my distress. (laughs) 
Did you hear that? You see, so many of us is waiting for things to get better. Listen to me this morning if you're sitting in the car. If you're watching this morning on the internet, if you're in this building, I want you to hear me today. Many of us are waiting for things to get better and then we'll choose. God said you got to choose why things are still bad. David said, in my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. Amen. And he said, from his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him and into his ear. You know what God decreed about that? He said, if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray in their distress. He said, then I will hear. You know what he's hearing? He's hearing your cry. Amen. Because God said he is touched by the very feeling of our infirmity. I want to tell you today, the cave don't discourage God, but what excites him is your feeling in the cave. as long as David was singing a song, gloom, despair, and agony on me. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. He sat right in that cave. But when he began to change his song, and he began to sing a new song, and he began to decree, Oh, my God is my Redeemer. My God is my fortress. Though I may not be slaying any giants today, (laughs) I believe in my distress that God is for me. And I'll be reminded today as I cry out to God and the Bible decrees and God heard you. Amen. (laughs) Amen. God hears you today. He hears whatever you're saying today. From his temple he heard my voice, my cry came before him and into his ears. Amen. Hear what the psalmist said in Psalm 34 and verse 4. He said, I sought the Lord. Amen. Did you hear that? I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all of my fears. You know what run David into cave? Fear. Now let's get back here in America in 2020. You know what I see on people's faces? I see fear. I believe it was Brandy had shared a little text yesterday, uh, one of you, Brandy, about the Walmart experience and watching people, the fear and the expression on their face. <laughs> I want to tell you all a little funny story. I don't even remember where I was at, but there was a lady about my age. Some of y'all are saying, that was an old woman. I could see it on your face. There was a lady about my age, and she had a mask on. Nothing wrong with that. She had a mask on. And evidently, she was smiling at me. I couldn't tell it. But evidently, she wanted me to smile back at her. We're living in perplexed times. Amen? Now, the good thing about it is if you've got on a mask, I can't tell whether I'm hitting the ball out of the park or I'm just, you know. I'm telling you, this woman reached up, Brother Charlie B., and she pulled her mask down and she said. (laughs) And all of a sudden, my good friend, he sells Coca-Cola for a living. His name's Barry House, and I love him. Man, I love that guy. I do, I love that guy. In 1984, I I hurt my back, and I was disabled. And you know what that boy done? He worked for me at that time. And and at that time, you know what he done? He come to my house, and I heard something out in my yard. You know what I heard? I heard a lawnmower running. He cut my grass when I wasn't able to cut it for myself. But Barry House will walk in a building, and if you ain't smiling, you know what he'll say to you? Go ahead and smile. It won't kill you. (laughs) I think that lady was telling me, son... You look like you're in despair. Put a smile on your face. It won't kill you. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't even tell she was smiling. She's smiling all over, and I couldn't tell she was. Church, I'm trying to tell you, when you get in despair, it's hard for anybody to see your smile. Amen. When fear is oppressing and pushing in, pushing in on you, it is hard for you to express what's really going on. But David encouraged himself, and he said, though I may be downtrodden, he said, I come to tell you, I believe that God is still for me this day. 
Amen. And I may be in distress, but I will not give up. I may be in despair, but I will not give in. Amen. Bible decrees in Psalms 34 and 17, he said, The righteous cry out. And the Lord hears them. And he does something when he hears us. He delivers them from all their troubles. <laughs> Some of us are just popping the bubble. Just wondering what's going to come up next. Worried to death about it. I mean, some of us has got, was he four or five? Help me, Wade. I know you helped me. In the trouble game, was he four or five men? Do you remember? Four? I've got three of them home. How many of you have ever been there? And you've got to get the exact number to get that last man in. And I'm sitting there, and you're coming from me. I mean, there's three other people. They're coming from me. I mean, they're coming from me. But I got my little red man. Because I'm like that. I ain't playing if I can't be red, all right? I'm just telling you. Because fire is red, and I'm coming for you. And I want to be red. I ain't going to be passive. I'm not going to be yellow about it. I sure ain't blue about whipping you. And I really ain't green, so I'm going to be red. I'm just going to get mad and not play if I can't be red. And if you don't watch me, I'm going to cheat. Tell them, Tammy, I don't play games. My grandbabies asked me, come on, Papa, I'm play I don't play games because I had to repent over my cheating. <laughs> and I had to ask God to forgive me. And then the Bible says, abstain from all appearance of evil. And I'm just telling you, you're never too far from who you really are. And if I play with you, I'm going to cheat because I'm in it to win it. And I don't like losing. And if I can't win, then I'm going to cheat to win. So the best thing for me to do, Robert's looking at me like I can't believe I'm sitting here listening to this man. I'm just being honest with you. Hey, man, if you know you're going to cheat, then don't do it. Hey, man. If you know you're apt to do something you ought not do, don't go there and intrigue yourself in that place. Hey, man. Spend a night in the phone booth if you've got to. That's a story for a different time. But spend a night in the phone booth if you've got to. Don't go in that bar if you know you're going to get drunk. Amen. Rise above that. Amen. Decree a new thing over your life. As for me and my house, we're going to serve God. We've already made that choice. Amen. Don't play the game. Amen. If you can't play by the rules. Amen. And I'm not telling you not to play. If you can play and you're okay to lose, play on. Amen. The supreme characteristic of the Christian is not that he doesn't fall. Are you hearing me? But that every time he falls, he rises again. It's not that he's never beaten, but that he is never ultimately defeated. You see, the Christian may lose a battle, but he knows that in the end that he can never lose the war. Just so I make sure you understand this, hear what 1 Corinthians 10 and 13 says. As we hear the word of God as it decrees a thing over our life, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. Look at your neighbor and say, God is faithful. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But sometimes you got to choose not to play. Hello? Sometimes you got to make some choices because you know you, not because you don't know God. Amen? But when you are tempted, because you're going to be, because you know what? I'm thinking to myself, I can go in there right now and beat every one of them. I know I can. And the worst part about it is, Sister Dolores, they know I can. They better know that I can, because I can. Okay? I'm just telling you. If you don't believe that, you're a loser.
loser. <laughs> I mean, if you don't believe in yourself, who's going to believe in you, okay? I mean, any of y'all ever walk by an old pond at night and you hear a toady frog out there croaking? I'm thinking to myself, you know, if you was a little pond, if you were a little uh, a toady frog, I believe I'd be quiet when them alligators might eat. You know what that frog's saying? This is my domain. I mean, amen. I believe sometimes you ought to go ahead and croak in your own pond, amen. You need to let somebody know, amen. Amen. How about 2 Corinthians 3 and 5? He says these words, not that we are hmm, competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves but our competence comes from God. Can I just say that? Our competence comes from God. I'm not encouraging you to believe in me today. I'm encouraging you to believe in God. Because I'm just going to be honest with you today. If you stick around me long enough, I'm going to fail you. Because I'm a human being. That's who we are. And before any of you think too highly of yourself, I want you to be careful because you'll fail yourself. Amen. You be careful of your own heart because the Bible said man's heart faileth him. Amen. As we're about to close this morning, I want to give you the last thing. I may be down, but I will be renewed. You see, David come to a place in that cave. He's still in the cave, by, by, by the way. He's still in the cave. But he said, I may be down, but I will be renewed. His confidence didn't come from himself. His confidence from, from the God that he had proven o'er and o'er again. He reached down. Look at Psalms 18, verses 16 and 17. I want you to hear what it said. He reached down from on high, and he took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. And what did it say next? He rescued me. Amen. He rescued me from my powerful enemy from my foes who were too strong for me that's who God is amen that's who God is that's who God is if you don't believe me yet go on to verses 18 and 19 I just want to confirm to you that they confronted me in the day of my disaster but the Lord was my support <laughs> Amen. He brought me out into a, what? Into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. I told you when we begun today that God is for you. And he still delights in you. And David is still in a cave. But he said, guess what? He rescued me because he delighteth in me. He delights in you this morning. And I want you to hear these words, and I'm not going to take the time to take you through each verse today because there are so many, but I just want you to hear this today. He heard my cry, Psalms 18 and 6. Uh, Psalms 18 and 9, he parted the heavens and he came down. Oh, yes, he mounted the cherubims and he flew. Amen. Uh, verse 10 of 18 says, He soar on wing of the wind. Amen. Uh, 18 and 11 said, He made darkness His covering, His canopy around Him, the dark rain clouds of the sky. Amen. Sometimes He comes right in in the middle of the darkness. Amen. Sometimes He rolls right in in the middle of the COVID. Amen. Sometimes He just makes Himself known in the middle of the fire. Amen. Oh, we're going to be thrown in this fire, amen, if we don't bow. But they done made up their mind who they're going to serve. And they're cast into the fire, amen. But the Bible decrees that King Nebuchadnezzar said, Hold on a minute. I see a fourth man in the fire. If God don't bring you out of the fire, he'll get in it with you, amen. Amen. And you take a king that ain't never laid eyes on him. And he got up off of his seat and he said, That fourth man looks like the Son of God to me. Even the devils know who he is. I want to tell you today, when the sun come up this morning, the devil said, uh-oh, they're in a cave, but they're going to hear a word today from heaven above, and somebody today is going to get this thing. And all of a sudden, heaven decreed, I see a man rolling in a cave, and he looks
looks like the Son of God. Amen. You may not believe it, but the devil believes it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He shot his arrow. Verse 14. And he scattered my enemies. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, verse 16 said, He reached down from on high and took hold of me. Amen. I, in verse 16, he said, He drew me out of the deep waters. Amen. Verse 17 said, He rescued me from my powerful enemy. 18 said, He was my support. 19 said, He brought me out into a spacious place. Lean on him with your insecurities, your worries, your fears, your brokenness. You see, God is in the business of taking weak, insignificant people and transforming them into His power. He comes to us in our weakness with the promise of His presence that will transform our weakness into His strength. God can deliver us because no trouble is too great. God can deliver us because... No trouble is too great. Verse 16 said it again. He reached down from on high and took hold of me and he drew me out of the deep waters. You see, God has and his hands are mentioned to us over 200 times in the Old Testament alone. And let me just leave you with two verses of Scripture that we can hear it in. Psalms 95, verse 4 and 5. We hear these words. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. <laughs> you didn't get it. You just missed it. You know what a cave is? A cave is a hewed out place in the mountain. The mistake that the enemy always makes, he backs you into a place that belongs to God. He ran David into a very place <laughs> that was sheltered in the hands of God. Just so you don't miss it today, God said this earth belongs to him and all its fullness. Will you stand to your feet this morning? I heard a very wise man make a statement one day. He said, you're either in a place of despair. You're either coming out of one or you're about to go into one. Because there's a swatter. The Bible describes him in a lot of ways. The Bible says that he is lying in wait, lurking, looking for whom he may devour. But I want to remind you today, wherever he runs you, it belongs to God. And he ran David into a cave, but what he missed was it belonged to God. I've heard it, I've said it before, many of you have heard it. But I'm going to remind you today, over 2,000 years ago, there was a fatal mistake made in a place called Calvary because the enemy had ran him to Golgotha's hill. But on that hill, <laughs> they laid down a cross and they nailed him to it. They thought they had him defeated. But in that moment, they made a fatal mistake. They suspended him between heaven and earth. But God had already decreed 
if I be lifted up, <laughs> I will draw all men unto me. Some of you this morning may be in a cave, but it belongs to God. Catch your breath and realize something. Every trap that has ever been set, there's one way in and one way out. You know the way out? The same way you went in. My rabbit boxes at home that's rotten, they only got one door on them. I set bait inside of them. I perched me a stick. And when a rabbit runs in, he bumps the stick and it drops the door. He's caught. The same door that he went in is the same door I get him out of. I'm the master of the bumper. God is the master of the trap. The devil just said it. But God is the master. Heavenly Father, take these scattered words. Transform them today into lessons of light. May we be reminded today as never before. We may be in trouble, but God is still for us. <laughs> We're punching the bubble, trying to figure out how. We're looking in every direction. What will it be? When can we do? And God said, if my people, if you're called by his name today, you have instructions. Call on his name. From in your distress. And when you do, he hears your cry. Then, he'll come open the trap. Is there anybody in this building today that's trapped? Anybody in this building today that just needs to say, God, I'm here and I'm caught. Preacher, it ain't my fault. It's okay. It's all right. God understands that. But I want to tell you how much God loves me today. Even when it was my fault, He still loved me. <laughs> he loved me enough that he come to rescue me. And the news I have for you today is God is no respecter of persons. If he rescued me, he'll rescue you. Anybody in this building today, just slip up your hand and say, you know what, preacher, I need rescue. Is there one? God sees those hands. Just slide it up, put it right back down. We're about to pray. Anyone else? God sees that hand. Anyone else? God sees that hand. Anyone else? God sees that hand. You know, all we're doing, we're decreeing a thing to God, and we're saying, here it is, God. I need you. We're going to do it just a little bit different this morning. I want to invite all of you that will to do it with me. I told you Wednesday night when we began our service that God has given us the keys to the kingdom. God is not going to do anything for me that he's already given me the key for. Okay? Now some of you may differ with that opinion, but that's just where I stand. You're welcome to your opinion, and that's okay. I'm all right with it. But I believe that God has given us the keys to the kingdom. I happen to be on my wife's little car today, and it don't even have a key that you put in it. But I can promise you, you can go out there and push that button inside of it and you're blue in the face. If you ain't got this key pod in your hand, you ain't going nowhere. So it works as a key. Okay? I can have this and I can go and sit down in her car. I can have it in my pocket. 
but I can sit in that car and go nowhere this afternoon if I refuse to punch that button and start that car. I've given you some keys today, and more importantly, God has given you keys long before I ever got here. And he said this. He said, I give you power in your tongue to speak life or to speak death, to speak blessings or to speak a curse. You believe that? It's what God said. So many times we're praying, God, move that mountain. And God's just sitting there. How many of y'all ever prayed and prayed and prayed and thought, God, where are you? And God's just sitting there looking at us, hearing our prayer. Why ain't you doing anything, God? Here's the answer. Because He's already given you the power. What is that power? He said, speak to that mountain. And say to it, Be thou removed. Be cast into the sea of forgetfulness. In other words, I command you to get out from in front of me and get behind me. Now Jesus didn't just tell us stuff. He showed us stuff. And he looked at Peter in Peter's despair. When he said, God, it be not so. Everybody else may forsake you, but not me. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be with you to the very end. And the Lord said, hold on a minute, Hawk. You ain't even going to make you ain't even gonna make it to daylight. <laughs> Before the rooster crows, you're going to be denying me. Not once, not twice, but three times. And you know what he said? He said, Satan, get thee behind me. I want to tell you something today. You've got to identify who the problem is. The, de- the problem is not Democratic and it's not Republican. It's not this or it's not that. The problem is Satan. And let me just say right here, 19 years ago something happened in America this month that brought us together. And we become one nation under God. And they said... You mess with us, and you got to fight all of us. But 19 years later, we're running rampant and destroying one another. Now, if you think it happened by surprise, George Washington, any of you ever heard of him? He said, this nation will not be destroyed from without. It will be destroyed from within. God said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, You know what praying is? Speaking it. God's given you the key. And I want you to decree a thing with me this morning. God, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. God, today I command by your authority that those things that hinder me be removed. I command that those things that need to come to me that they come now. I command that not by might nor by power but by your spirit this day I come out of this cave. For I am and have been in God's favor. And no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I will follow you. I refuse to be bound by fear for you have not given me a spirit of fear amen there it is go ahead and start doing it thank you Lord thank you Lord
Thank you, Lord. I, I don't rely upon my own confidence, but I rely upon the God that I serve. And the God that I serve said he's greater than any foe that I face. Come on, Brother Ricky. Any foe that I face. Any foe. Right there, brother. Bring that with you. Thank you all for being here today. If you don't know Jesus, this is your moment.